Hey everyone, it's Miss Morris, and I am going to start reading and uploading videos of 20 minutes of reading so that you can keep up with it if you don't have your own book. You can just listen along. I have Dork Diaries today. I got some new books to the library, so I wanted to share them with everyone. So this is the first book in the Dork Diaries series. It is by Rachel Renee Russell. And the diary belongs to Nikki J. Maxwell, the main character. Saturday, August 31st. Sometimes I wonder if my mom is brain dead. Then there are days when I know she is, like today. The drama started this morning when I casually asked if she would buy me one of those cool new iPhones that do almost everything. I considered it a necessity of life, second only to maybe oxygen. What better way to clinch a spot in the CCP, cute, cool, and popular group at my new private school, Westchester Country Day, than by dazzling them with a wicked new cell. Last year, it seemed like I was the only student in my entire middle school who didn't have one. So I bought an older used phone super cheap on eBay. It was bigger than what I wanted, but I figured I couldn't go wrong for the clearance price of only $12.99. I put my telephone in my locker and spread the word that everyone could now call me with all the juicy gossip on my new telephone. Then I counted down the minutes before my social life started heating up. I got really nervous when two of the CCP girls came walking down the hall in my direction, chatting on their cell phones. And she's drawn a little image for us. They came right over to my locker and started acting super friendly. Then they invited me to sit with them at lunch and I was like, uh, okay. But deep down inside, I was jumping up and down and doing my Snoopy happy dance. Then things got really strange. They said they had just heard about my new $600 juicy couture design cell phone and that everyone, meaning the rest of the CCP crew, couldn't wait to see it. I was about to explain that I had said juicy gossip on my new phone, not new gossip on my juicy phone, but I never got a chance because, unfortunately, my telephone started ringing, very abnormally loudly. I was trying to ignore it, but both of the CCP girls were staring at me like, well, aren't you going to answer it? Obviously, I didn't want to answer it because I had a really bad feeling they were going to be a little disappointed when they actually saw my phone. So I just stood there praying that it would stop ringing, but it didn't. And pretty soon, everyone in the hallway was staring at me too. Finally, I gave in, snatched open my locker and answered the phone, mainly to stop that awful ringing. I was like, hello? Um, sorry, wrong number. And when I turned around, both of the CCP girls were running down the hall screaming, make it go away, make it go away. I guess it probably meant they didn't want me to sit with them at lunch anymore, which really stunk. The most important lesson I learned last year was that having a cruddy phone or none at all can totally ruin your social life. While hordes of celebrity party girls regularly forget to wear undies, not a single one would be caught dead without her cell phone. Which was why I was nagging my mom about buying me an iPhone. I've tried saving up my own money to buy one, but it was impossible to do. Mainly because I'm an artist and totally addicted to drawing. Like, if I don't do it every day, I'll go nuts. I spend all my cash on sketchbooks, pencils, pens, art camp, and other stuff. Hey, I'm so broke. I have a milkshake on layaway at McDonald's. Anyway, when mom came home from the mall with a special back to school present for me, I was pretty sure I knew what it was. She rambled on and on about my attending a new private school was going to be a stressful time of tremendous personal growth and how my best coping mechanism would be to communicate my thoughts and feelings. I was absolutely ecstatic because you can communicate with a new cell phone right? I kind of zoned out on most of what my mom was saying because I was daydreaming about all the cool ringtones, music, and movies I was going to download. It was going to be love at first sight. 
But after my mom finally finished her little speech, she smiled really big, hugged me, and handed me a book. I opened it and frantically flipped through the pages, figuring that maybe she had hidden my new cell phone inside. It made perfect sense at the time because all the advertisements said it was the thinnest model on the market. But slowly, it dawned on me that my mom had not gotten me a cell phone, and my so-called present was just a stupid little book. Talk about major heartbreak. Then I noticed that all the pages of the book were blank. I was like, oh no, she didn't. My mom had given me two things, a diary and irrefutable evidence that she is, in fact, clinically brain dead. Absolutely no one writes their most intimate feelings and deep dark secrets in a diary anymore. Why? Because just one or two people knowing all your biz could completely ruin your reputation. You're supposed to post this kind of juicy stuff online in your blog so millions can read it. Only a total dork would be caught writing in a diary. This is the worst present I have ever received in my entire life. I wanted to yell at the top of my lungs. Mom, I don't need a stupid book with 288 blank pages. What I need is to be able to communicate my thoughts and feelings to my friends using my very own cell phone. Wait, silly me. I keep forgetting. I don't have any friends yet. But that could change overnight. And I need to be prepared with a shiny new cell. In the meantime, I will not write in this diary again. Never, ever. Monday, September 2nd. Okay. I know I said I'd never write in this diary again. I meant it at the time. I'm definitely not the kind of girl who curls up with a diary in a box of Godiva chocolates to write a bunch of really sappy stuff about my dreamy boyfriend, my first kiss, or my overwhelming angst about the horrific discovery that I'm a princess of a small French-speaking principality and now worth millions. This is so not me. My life totally sucks. All day, I wandered around my new school like a zombie in lip gloss. Not a single person bothered to say hi. This is me. Most of the time, I feel invisible. How am I supposed to fit in at a snobby prep school like Westchester Country Day? This place has a Starbucks in the cafeteria. I wish my dad had never been awarded a bug extermination contract from this school. They could take their little pity scholarship and give it to someone who wants it and needs it, because I don't. Tuesday, September 3rd. It's way past midnight, and I'm about to freak out because I still don't have my homework done. The assignment is for Honors English Lit, and we're reading A Midsummer Night's Dream by Shakespeare. I was kind of surprised because I didn't know he wrote Teen Chick Lit. It's about a mischievous fairy named Puck who tries to break up with a really cute break up a really cute couple lost in an enchanted forest. Then, this guy with a donkey head crashes a big fairy party and hooks up with their queen. Pretty weird stuff. Party. Our homework assignment is to complete three essay questions about Puck. One, would you consider Puck the protagonist of the play? Why or why not? Two, how do Puck's personality and actions set the mood of the play? Three, Use your imagination and provide either a detailed physical description or drawing of Puck. The first two questions weren't that hard, and I finished them in no time at all. However, the third question threw me through a loop. I didn't have the slightest idea what Puck looked like, but I tried to imagine him with cute little pointy ears as hot as Nick Jonas. I was also dying to know if having a messed up name like Puck completely ruined his life. She also drew Corbin Blue and Justin Timberlake. I bet the popular kids at his school called him puke, schmuck, yuck, or something worse. Poor Puck. I tried to go to that educational website, wiki, something or other, that everyone plagiarizes to find a picture of Puck, but I couldn't remember the name of it and was too lazy to Google it. I was really surprised to hear a knock on my bedroom door this late at night and I assumed it was my six-year-old sister, Brianna. 
About a week ago, she lost one of her front teeth and buried it in the backyard to see if it would grow. She is forever doing crazy weird stuff like that. My mom says it's because she's still a little kid, but I personally think it's because she has the IQ of a box of crayons. As a little joke, I told Brianna the Tooth Fairy collected teeth from children all over the world and then super glued them together to make dentures for old people. I explained that she was in big trouble with the Tooth Fairy, seeing as she had dug a hole and buried her tooth somewhere out in the backyard. The funniest part was that Brianna totally believed me. She actually dug up half of Mom's flower garden trying to find her tooth. Since then, Brianna has been paranoid that the Tooth Fairy is going to sneak into her room in the middle of the night and pull out all her teeth to make dentures. But my prank kind of backfired because now she absolutely refuses to use the bathroom at night unless I first check to make sure the Tooth Fairy is not hiding behind the shower curtain or under the bath towels. And if I'm not quick enough, Brianna will have a little accident right on my bedroom carpet. B but what if the Tooth Fairy is hiding in there? Unfortunately, I had to learn the hard way that, contrary to the TV commercial, Carpet Fresh does not remove all odors. Lucky for me, it wasn't Brianna at my door, but my parents. Before I could say, come in, they just kind of barged in like they always do, which really irritated me because this is supposed to be my room. And as an American citizen, I have a constitutional right to privacy, which they keep invading. The next time my parents and Brianna come rolling up in here, I'm going to scream, Hey, why don't y'all just move in? Anyway, my parents said they were surprised to see that I was still up doing homework, and they wanted to know how things were going at school. It was really strange because just as I was about to answer, I had a total meltdown right on the spot and burst into tears. My parents were shocked and stared at me and then at each other. Finally, Mom hugged me and said, My poor little boo-boo, which only made me feel worse. Not fitting in at school was bad enough, but now I had to suffer the additional humiliation of being the only 14-year-old still being called little boo-boo. Suddenly, my dad's face lit up. Hey, I've got a great idea. We know you've been under a lot of stress lately with our move and your new school. I bet if we posted some positive affirmations all around the house, it would help you adjust, you think? I was like, okay, Dad, this is what I think. It's a stupid idea. Like, sticky notes with corny sayings on them will solve my problems of being a total loser at school. You want to know what else I think? The article I read about bug extermination chemicals killing off brain cells is probably true. But I just said it inside my head so no one else heard it but me. My parents kept staring at me, and it was trying to creep me out. Finally, after what seemed like forever, my mom smiled and said, Honey, just remember, we love you. And if you need us, we're right down the hall. They walked back to their bedroom, and for several minutes, I could hear their muffled voices. I guessed that they were probably discussing whether or not I should be committed to a mental hospital right then or first thing in the morning. Since it was so late, I decided to finish my puck assignment during study hall. I wondered if you still had to hand in homework when you're locked up in a, when you're locked up in a psycho ward. Wednesday, September 4th. My new issue of That's So Hot magazine says the secret to happiness is the four Fs. Friends, fun, fashion, and flirting. But, unfortunately, the closest I've ever gotten to friends, fun, fashion, and flirting is having a locker right next to Mackenzie Hollister. She's the most popular girl in 8th grade. Lucky me. I had just finished fighting my way through the crowded halls to get to my locker and had almost been trampled alive. Then suddenly, as if by magic, the huge mob of students parted right down the center, just like the Red Sea. That's when I first saw Mackenzie strutting down the hallway, like it was the runway of a Paris fashion show or something. She had blonde hair and blue eyes and was dressed like she had just left the photo shoot for the cover of Teen Vogue. And everyone, except me, immediately fell under her powerful hypnotic spell and totally lost their minds. What's up, Mackenzie? You look so hot, Mackenzie. Are you coming to my party this weekend, Mackenzie? Love your shoes, Mackenzie. Will you marry me, Mackenzie? You'll never guess who has a crush on you, Mackenzie. Is that another designer purse, Mackenzie? Fabulous hair today, Mackenzie. I'll pluck out my eye with a pencil and eat it with a spam and mustard sandwich if only you'll sit with me at lunch today, Mackenzie. 
Which also proves my theory that there's always at least one seriously mentally ill weirdo in every middle school in America. It was Mackenzie, Mackenzie, Mackenzie when she walked up to the locker right next to mine. I knew then and there it was I was going to have a very bad school year. Mackenzie and Nikki. Being so close to the radiance of her awesome yet sickening perfection just made me feel like a humongous loser. And it didn't help that she was hogging most of my personal space. Hey, it wasn't like I was jealous of her or anything. I mean, how totally juvenile would that be? Between classes, Mackenzie and her friends are forever standing right in front of my locker, ggg -g That means giggling, gossiping, and glossing. And whenever I get up the nerve to say, excuse me, but I really need to get into my locker, she just ignores me or rolls her eyes and says stuff like, annoying much? Or, what's her problem? And I'm like, hey girlfriend, I don't have no stinking problem. But I just say it inside my head so no one really hears it except me. However, deep down I'm troubled and ashamed that a tiny part of me, a very dark and primitive side, would totally love to be best friends with Mackenzie. And I find that part of myself so disgusting, I could vomit. But, on a much happier note, I'm really into lip gloss too. My favorite one right now is Crazy Kisselicious Strawberry Crush Glitterati. It's yummy and tastes like strawberry cheesecake. Unfortunately, no super cute hunk like Brandon Roberts, the guy who sits in front of me in my biology class, has developed a huge crush on me and fallen in love with my fabulous glossy lips, like in all of the Crazy Kisselicious television commercials. But hey, it could happen. In the meantime, I've decided to try and enjoy my single status. Oh, I almost forgot. Dad is supposed to pick me up after school today to take me to my dentist appointment. Please, please, please don't let him pick me up in his work van with the five foot long plastic roach on top. I would absolutely die if anyone found out I only attend the school due to his bug extermination contract. Thursday, September 5th. Mackenzie and her snobby friends are about to get on my last nerve. They're always making nasty comments about any girl who wanders within six feet of them. I mean, who do they think they are? The fashion police? Hi, sweetie. You're under arrest for a felony fashion violation. Today, in under one minute, Mackenzie gave out the following scathing fashion commentary while applying her lip gloss. Don't you need a license to be that ugly? That outfit would be perfect for Goodwill. If she knows what's good for her, she will burn it. OMG, I bought that exact same sweater she's wearing for my dog from PetSmart. What's that awful stink? She's supposed to spray on the perfume, not marinate in it. She has so much acne. She uses a special makeup brand. It's called Why Bother. What's up with her new hairstyle? It looks like a small mammal made a nest in her hair, had babies, and died. She thinks she's so cute. She's just living proof that manure can actually grow legs and walk. To call Mackenzie a mean girl would be an understatement. She's vicious. She's a pit bull in glittery eyeshadow and Jimmy Choo flip-flops. Friday, September 6th. I think I finally figured out why I don't fit in at this school. I need a new designer wardrobe for one of those really expensive teen shops at the mall. You know, the ones where the sales girls dress like Hannah Montana and have pierced belly buttons, blonde highlights, and phony smiles. But what drives me insane is their nasty habit of unexpectedly snatching open the curtain of your dressing room and popping their head inside while you're like half naked. It's enough to make you want to slap those blonde highlights right out of their hair. And when you look in the mirror, you can obviously see the outfit looks horrible on you. But those sale girls just smile real big and act cute and perky and lie to your face by saying the outfit, one, looks totally fabulous, two, brings out your natural skin tones, and three, complements your eye color. They'll tell you this even if you're trying on one of those huge green lawn size hefty trash bags. Hun, that looks so cute on you. Me, wearing a trash bag. I also hate the clothes that are snobby chic. It's when the exact same outfit looks totally different on two very similar girls. The more popular you are at school, the better it looks on you. And the more unpopular you are, the worse it looks on you. I can't tell you how a snobby chic outfit mysteriously does all this personal stuff about knows all this personal stuff about you, but it obviously does. Why I hate snobby chic fashions. Cool snobby chic outfit at the mall. 
popular girl. Me. The snobby chic phenomenon is quite a mind-boggling thing. Hopefully, Congress will allocate funding for scientists to study it, along with how socks mysteriously disappear from the dryer. But until then, buyer beware. Anyway, after my mom buys me a designer wardrobe, I'm going to walk right up to Mackenzie and her little entourage and tell them off really good. But before I say anything, I'm going to put my hands on my hips and do that neck roll thing like Tyra Banks, just to show them how much attitude I really have. Tyra says every girl must find her own inner beauty, deep down inside and ignore all the haters. She's so sweet and a wonderful role model. Although I have to admit, she's kind of scary on America's Next Top Model, especially when she's screaming stuff at those poor contestants. Then she starts crying hysterically and popping Tic Tac breath mints. I just love that girl. I've decided that I'm going to tell Mackenzie right to her face, on like maybe the last day of school, that just because she and her clones dress like fashionistas, they do not have the right to say really mean things about other people. People being the girls whose moms make them shop at JCPenney, Sears, Target, and Walmart. Girls like, well, me. Okay, it's not a big secret that the clothes from those stores aren't as hot as the clothes at the mall. And yes, it's a huge inconvenience and definite turnoff to have the lady to have to walk through the old ladies, fat ladies, and pregnant ladies departments to get to the one for teens. No wonder most girls prefer those fancy teen shops at the mall. Just keeps on walking through all the different sections. My mom says it really doesn't matter where your clothes come from as long as they're clean, right? Wrong. I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard Mackenzie shriek, Oh my god, where are these pathetic girls buying such hideous clothes? I'd come to school butt naked before I ever buy my fashions from a store that sells lawnmowers. To be honest, I didn't know that the stores I shopped at sold lawnmowers. And even if they do, big fat hairy deal. It's not like the clothes smell like a lawnmower or something, at least I hadn't noticed it. The next time I go shopping, I'm going to sniff the clothing before I buy anything, just to make sure. I'm also going to wear a hat, wig, sunglasses, and phony mustache so no one will recognize me. Whatever. Alright, there's the first 20 minutes. And tomorrow I will upload another 20 minutes of reading Dork Diaries.